It is yet another glorious day in Greenland. I've woken up and that is my view. Massive, massive mountains, icebergs again everywhere. I am going on a tour. I've done my morning stint of work and I am now going on a tour. I am on a rib, one of those big, fast Zodiac boats for eight people and we're gonna go see some icebergs today. Greenland is just, ah, I absolutely love it. I was on a Zodiac tour with uh, my friend Louis from Shore Excursions and one of the bridge guys, Brad, was with us. And we just had a really, really cool day. It was just an hour and a half on a Zodiac cruising around all these icebergs. But my gosh, these things, they're so imposing. They're right next to you. We went so close. We literally touched the iceberg. I touched it with my own hand. Ah, Beautiful, crystal clear part of one of the icebergs that was so pure, it was pure water. It was see-through. It was see-through ice. It wasn't like the, the white iceberg that we see. It was physically completely see-through. Pure, pure, pure ice. And you can see all the runoff. There's so much of it melts. You see loads of water just pouring off this iceberg. But the thing is that big doesn't make any difference to the thing at all. It's absolutely amazing. And the guy was talking about, we are our pilot, our captain, was talking about the dangers that these icebergs pose. I mean, they come from nowhere. They, of course, sit in the bay. They're a danger to shipping. If they are that big, they literally have to blow them up for the simple reason, of course, the ice melts. And if enough, if a big enough part of the iceberg falls into the sea, of course, it's gonna create a fairly big wave. When those icebergs are the size that they are, and in a big enough chunk falls in, it creates a tsunami or a mini tsunami, which is a huge danger. To the local settlements and things, I mean, you have a little bit of a tsunami, who's gonna help you all the way out here? Nobody. So they have to be as well prepared as possible. And yeah, they literally blow these things up sometimes before they get within range of doing any, any damage. Oh, it was so interesting. We're talking about this huge glacier they had earlier in the year. The same size as Manhattan. Manhattan Island. So New York City, an iceberg just cruising by, floating by. Uh, I don't know if they blew it up or not. I think they probably did because something that size, again, imagine if half of New York City fell into the water. That's a pretty big tidal wave which would decimate all these coastal places. So, um, yeah, more dangerous than you think, these, uh, these icebergs. And um, they're also saying that depending on how big the iceberg is, um, only, you only ever see about 20% to 10% of it above the water. The rest of it is, is below the water, um, which I dare say most of us might have already known that. Now, the one thing that the guy was talking about, was, which was really kind of scary, is that the center of gravity in these icebergs can change at any moment. If the iceberg is too heavy at the top or too light at the bottom, the iceberg will flip upside down. You saw the icebergs today. If that iceberg was to do a full 180, that's a big wave it's gonna cause, and anything anywhere near it, like a boat, is gonna get hit pretty hard on the side, and again, is gonna doom everybody in that boat. And that is completely unpredictable. At any moment today, that could have happened. They were fairly confident that, that it wasn't, because they thought that the, uh, the icebergs were anchored to the floor. They were that big, they think they were you know, they've, they've broken off and they've latched themselves now at the shallow part of the bay where we went today. Um, that enormous iceberg we saw today will apparently be gone by October. It's August now as I'm filming this. So in two months, that enormous block of ice, which was taller than my cruise ship, by the way. We estimated that was about 40 meters tall, which is bigger than my cruise ship. Um, so that will all be gone in, um, in two months time. It's just mind blowing. And the beauty of the whole area, icebergs apart, the fjords, the mountains, the mountains, they're really, really spiky. It's not like it's just, you know, a regular triangle like a regular mountain would look. They're just so spiky and so, you know, jagged that it makes no sense how they were formed. Anyway, I uh, had my wonderful tour with my friends today, come back on board the ship half an hour late because the tender operation took a bit of time today. And uh, now I'm back in the cabin, I'm gonna go and do some, um, some work now we've enjoyed greenland we've enjoyed this cruise but that is now it we now have four sea days in a row four very busy sea days i might add um which is compounded by the fact we are also now traveling west which means the time zone now changes pretty drastically over the next four days we've got to go back three time zones in four days which means it's an hour back tonight 
and the day after and the day after which means we're all going to be absolutely shattered by the last day of the cruise and then we have a turnaround day which is crazy hectic so the next four or five days even are going to be pretty darn crazy for everybody involved. Just tomorrow I have two Captain Circle parties to do. I have a full-blown meeting with my head office tomorrow and I also have a guest to destination trivia tomorrow as well. So endless, endless things going on, but I absolutely love it. See you probably in Southampton or on our next cruise, which is the British Isles. And I can't wait because that cruise, my family is coming on board. I can't wait.